Welcome to the Sayings of Jesus. In today's message, A Home in Heaven, Dr. McLuhan teaches how Jesus calmed the troubled hearts of his disciples by assuring them that all who follow him have a home in heaven. Three years of the life of Jesus is compressed into just the first 11 chapters of John's Gospel. John devoted the rest of his Gospel to the last week of Jesus' life leading up to his crucifixion and then resurrection appearances. Chapter 12 begins with John in the village of Bethany. We read six days before Passover celebration, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, and the man whom he had raised from the dead. And so now we have Jesus who has come out of Galilee for the last time and will spend the last week of his life in the city of Jerusalem. In chapters 13 through 17, we find a collection of some of the most important sayings of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. What a wonderful statement. We're going to focus on that today and ask God to speak to our hearts. Every day, people carry the troubles of life in their heart. Every day, People write to me and share their troubles with me. This saying is a powerful invitation to give our troubles to Jesus. Ask Jesus to help you to identify what's troubling you so you can give it to him. Sometimes people don't even know what's troubling them. I'm I'm upset, but I don't know why. And maybe you're like that. I'm just asking Jesus to clarify it for you. When Jesus said these words... He knew his disciples were struggling with what he had just said, and he wanted them to have peace in their hearts. Now, in the verses that preceded in chapter 13, Jesus had said, Judas will betray me and Peter will deny me. There's a reason right there to be troubled in your spirit, isn't it? And he predicted his crucifixion. People were troubled, and people have come today, I believe, carrying trouble. You're watching online and you have trouble in your heart. Is it any wonder that Jesus said on that occasion, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. How many times have you had people say, well, don't worry, I believe in God. Don't get me wrong, I believe in God. It's not enough. you got to believe in Jesus because Jesus is who gives us access to God. So say with me, Jesus, I give you my troubles. They're too big for me to handle. Go on, say it with me. Jesus, I give you my troubles. They're too big for me to handle. I don't even understand why I'm in trouble, but I believe that you are big enough to handle the troubles I'm facing. Now, you just feel, just feel a load. I just feel something lightening in the church. I just feel some burdens being lifted up. It's almost like the church is elevating, not in a seance kind of way, but just I just feel like a lift is happening right now in our presence. Feel a lift in your home where you are. Not something weird, but something spiritual. Weight coming off of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you our troubles. We give you our weight. And now we're ready to hear this powerful saying from Jesus. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. So aren't you so glad? If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? John chapter 14 and verse 2. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John chapter 14 and verse 3. What wonderful words these are from our Savior. I'm so glad there's space in heaven for everyone. Now, some groups teach that there's limited space in heaven or only certain special or select people or a certain number get to go. Aren't you so glad Jesus didn't say that whatsoever? Heaven is open to all who have opened their heart for Jesus. You're not going to have to worry about getting the last room. There's no last room in heaven because he's constantly making new rooms and heaven is as big as the heavens are. Well, now eventually uh, Rome banished the one who wrote these words, John, to the island of Patmos. And it was on Patmos that he learned more about heaven. I'd like to comment on a few of the things that John wrote. 
And one of my treasured memories is the privilege of visiting that same island, the island of Patmos, and walking across some of the hills where John walked and gazing out upon the open Aegean Sea and thinking about the revelation that he received from heaven on the nature of heaven. What a place to receive a revelation about God and about heaven. Here are some of the amazing details that John shared with us. He saw Jesus sitting on the throne. Some religions say Jesus is not in heaven, but in the fourth or the fifth or the seventh heaven or the third heaven. It just depends who you talk to. Jesus isn't there. He's in the heaven exactly where God is, where we will be. He saw him sitting on the throne. And he said, for the lamb and the throne will be the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd and he will lead them to springs of life-giving water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 17. How many of you have turned to that and thought about the blessing of having Father himself wipe away the sorrows of your life? There are a few things more precious than having someone we love wipe the tears from our eyes as a dad. I've had the privilege of wiping away the tears from my children, tears of heartache, tears of injuries, tears of disappointment, tears of discouragement. Yes. And as a pastor, how many people have I sat with, even in this room, and wiped tears away as we have counseled together the goodness of God in our lives. As my dear mother aged, I wiped some of the tears from her eyes when she was in pain. What a blessing to wipe the tears of those who are suffering. And Jesus has spiritually wiped all of your tears, and there will be no tears in heaven. What could be more precious than God himself wiping away the tears? I've heard your stories. I know how you've suffered. And somebody watching is so isolated, you don't feel uh, that the loving presence of God has, has visited you, but today he is coming upon you. You're living alone. You feel abandoned by your family. Friends from your younger years have all moved on, but God has not abandoned you. And today this saying of Jesus is coming true for you in your life. He's right there, right in your room to wipe your tears away. Feel him. Feel his loving presence comforting you and encouraging you no matter what you are facing. John went on to say, there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Yes. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. What wonderful news that is. Aren't you so glad? No more pain. And those of us who lost loved ones prematurely, in family or children, what more grief could there be than for a mother or father to lose children prematurely in life by accident or whatever method? What a grief it is. There's no more crying or pain or sorrow in heaven because all these things are gone forever. It's so wonderful to know that there's no pain in heaven. Uh, there, 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 there'll be no time to have regrets and say, I wish I hadn't done this. I wish I'd done that differently. I wish I hadn't made that mistake. It's all been washed away by the blood of Jesus and by the great loving arms of our heavenly Father. John uh, heard, uh, heard these words, look, I'm making everything new. <laughs> Wonderful. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5. Aren't you so glad Jesus can't lie to you? You've been lied to by good and close friends. You've been lied to by family, relatives. You've been lied to by employers. Jesus will never lie to you. He is the truth. He can't say a lie because he is the truth. I'm making everything new. We release a wave of newness into your life, a newness now and a newness that will for portray for you what heaven will be like when you finally uh, arrive there. Our earthly journey is just a moment in time, but heaven is filled with new beginnings and new opportunities. What a wonderful promise. This is what the Bible says. We are fully confident that we would rather be away from our earthly bodies than we will be at home with the Lord 
in heaven, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. If you're used to one of the older translations, it says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord with no in-between steps. You close your eyes here and you open them in heaven with a glorified body. What a glorious thing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're going directly to heaven. We are so grateful for all that he has prepared for us to receive. Now, how different this is from one of the sayings of Muhammad in the Quran. The Quran describes paradise as a place filled with earthly pleasures rather than heavenly experiences. And when asked about hell, this is what Muhammad said. Not one of you will pass over it. This is with thy Lord, a decree which must be accomplished. The surah is chapter 19, and the verse name is Miriam, and the ayat or the verse is verse 71. You can read 70 and 71. What a tragic statement. Uh, one translation in the Quran says, everyone goes to hell without exception. What tragic words. And the Quran only can offer paradise to those who've first been to hell and suffered for the wrongs they did in life or who have had enough prayers said over them by famous imams that they will be able to go to heaven. I'm so glad for the sayings of Jesus who offered us a place in heaven for all who put their trust in the Father. Of course, naturally, the disciples had questions about this. What Jesus had just said, and I'm so glad for Thomas. He was the one to speak up and seemed like Thomas always asked the right question at the right time. Uh, some others asked the wrong question at the wrong time. That would be Peter. But Thomas asked the right question at the right time to help all of us. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? John chapter 14 and verse 5. Jesus gave one of the most powerful answers. <clears throat> it's an important question. It just is such an important question. <clears throat> it's the most important question you can ask. How do I get to heaven? His question put into words the question that millions of people around the world are hoping to get an answer to. How can we get to heaven? Most people are afraid of death. Unsure of what will happen. But when you get the answer to this question, God will take the fear of death away from you. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It's the most exclusive statement any religious leader ever made. But he was qualified to make it because he'd come from heaven and he knew how to get to heaven John chapter 14 and verse 6. People knew that all over the world, Jesus knew that all over the world, people are looking for a way to heaven. Many suggestions have been made. But since Jesus is the one who was already in heaven preparing a place for us, surely he must be the best person to ask, how do I get to heaven? I'm inviting you to ask that question today. Now, it would make no sense to ask someone how to get to heaven who's never been to heaven. Jesus said, I know the way. Not only do I know the way, I know the truth. In Jesus, in Galilee, Jesus called his disciples and he said this, If you abide in my words and you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. I want to tell you the story of Samar. He's <coughs> one of our network pastors. Uh, he's from Sikkim. It's in a secluded region, autonomous zone, high in the mountains of the Himalayas. It's part of India, but a special visa and permit to get there. His life was uh, empty, even though he was successful in business. He decided to study the religions of the world seeking for this very thing that Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He studied all of them. He's written to me extensively about it, Buddhism, Hinduism, all of the religions of the world, Islam. Tragically, he found no answer that he was looking for. He decided to end his life. 
Before he did so, he went to visit his uncle who lived in Gantok. He was down in, down in the plains where he is successful in the business he was in, the company he worked for. So he went back up the mountains to his home territory, the, the old family farm, and then to Gantok, the city way up in the mountains. The morning he was about to leave, his uncle said to him, son or cousin or whatever it is, the relationship wasn't, wasn't a son, <clears throat> it's Christmas. Would you come to church with me today? It's Christmas. It won't be long, and you can go on uh, back home. It's a church, by the way, that I've had the privilege of preaching in, way up in those mountains. Samar agreed to go to that service just to honor his uncle. He said, I'll go to the service, and after that, I'll kill myself. But during the service, he encountered the way of Jesus. He learned the truth about Jesus and the life of Jesus, and he gave his troubled heart to Jesus. He is a powerful man of God. Amen. Let's give thanks for God reaching into the lives of people. He's one of our network pastors carrying a high anointing, and he's helped many people come to know the way to heaven through Jesus. And many people, when he has prayed, when he prays for them, are healed. He's prayed for me many times. We just sometimes meet early in the morning <clears throat> on phone or late at night because we're so far apart, 11 and a half hours apart. He'll pray for me, and I'll pray for him. And we'll ask God to touch our families and touch our lives. Maybe you're like Samar. Uh, you've had trouble in your heart, and you're thinking about ending your life. I invite you today to discover what Samar discovered about Jesus. In a few moments, I will give you an invitation to follow Jesus. So Jesus lovingly prepared the hearts of his disciples for the suffering that he was about to endure. Uh, they did get fearful. They did forsake him. But Jesus did not reject them. And your fear and your troubles won't cause Jesus to turn away from you. Rather, if you stay humble, he will be helplessly drawn to you to love you and to reach out to you with what you're facing. After his resurrection, Jesus visited these fearful men and showed them his hands and his sides. Remember, Thomas was the one who asked the right question. Show us your side. Show us your feet. Show us your hands. And he prepared them to be a witness for him after he went back to heaven by promising them the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is how it happened. When he had said these things, they were looking around. When Jesus had said these things, they were looking around. And he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight into heaven. Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. This was on the Mount of Olives. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, two angels. It was Gabriel who announced to Mary the birth of Jesus, the conception of Jesus. It was Gabriel who made so many announcements. And it was this same Gabriel who announced to these men these Powerful words. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you to heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go. Acts chapter 1 and verse 10. I too have had the privilege of walking not only on the ridges of Patmos, but on the ridges of the Mount of Olives. It's a very special place. And one time I was asked to speak on the ascension of Jesus to a group of people visiting the Mount of Olives. I assure you, Jesus is coming back. He's coming to gather all who have turned to him for salvation. He's going to take us to the place that he's prepared for us in heaven. Are you ready for his return? Uh, as I've spoken, you may have come to the understanding just how troubled your heart is, like some are. You're not sure which way to follow, which one to follow. Like some are, you're not sure if Jesus has prepared a place for you in heaven. 
If you're not sure, you'll spend eternity with God in heaven. I invite you to follow Jesus. He's offered you a place in heaven to all who will accept him. Accept that he knows the way. Accept that he is the truth. Accept that he is the life. He died for you in your place so that you can spend eternity with God in the, his presence in heaven. Thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross. Ask him to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Holy Spirit, come and fill each one with your presence. Calm the troubled heart and fill us with your peace. Thank you, Lord, for people who are turning to you right now. Open eyes to see you. And people who are suffering pain, we release the healing presence of Jesus. Heal right now. Be healed of your cancer. Be healed of your pain. Be healed of your hurting joints and rheumatoid arthritis. Go in the name of Jesus. Move your joints and just feel the presence of God coming upon you. What a blessing to share this message with you. Join us next week as we continue learning from the sayings of Jesus. Father, we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We accept your salvation, and we look forward to enjoying heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.